When I was about 12 years old, my parents decided to uproot us and move us from San Antonio, Texas to here in Westfield, Indiana. And actually, my, when my dad came to us, he said, he sat us down and he said, kids, we're moving to Caramel, Indiana. And I have no clue how he got the pronunciation caramel out of caramel, but that's not what even what got us. What got us is I looked to my sister and I whispered, where's Indiana? Is that in Texas? And she's like, I don't know. I mean, I could tell you where the best taco shop was in town, but I cannot tell you where the state of Indiana was. I can barely tell you now. And Los Robertos, if anybody's wondering about the taco shop. But We've moved quite a bit, so I knew what I was about to have to go through. But when my dad said caramel, I was like, nope, no. I'm, I, don't, I don't even like caramel that much. I will not like this place at all. What's funny is we actually moved to Westfield, not caramel. But besides the hours of crying, the only thing I remember is feeling so powerless. I mean, I had no say in if we moved, no say the school I'd go to, the people I'd meet. I had no control over anything. And thinking about it now, I realize how much better that experience could have been. Something I do too often and try my absolute best to stop is falling into self-victimization. The, I'm done. I mean, are you kidding me? I'm going to put a frown on my face and make everybody else feel bad. Looking at it now, I'm so glad we're able to make mistakes. But even more than that, I'm so glad we're able to grow from them. Because powerless is not permanent. It's a temporary emotion. That word powerless shouldn't have merit over you. You shouldn't be rewarded for lowering yourself to that standard. Well, well, we all know we should do better, but how? How do we find the power within to get through any obstacle and any opportunity? Well, literally and luckily, we have all the tools, all the resources. I have found the three body parts that can transform the I can't to the I can. And I've matched those body parts with what they need to be placed with to acquire courage. The first one is a service-oriented heart. Let me tell you right now, you are your biggest critic. You are doing okay. But you know what? You could always be doing better. So what does service even mean? The Oxford Dictionary says service is the act, the action of helping or doing work for someone. I like to think of it as the I will. Yeah, sure. Do you need anything? I'll be there. Now imagine saying these statements or question to yourself. Just take a moment. When I first typed that out, I was like, whoa, whoa, that's deep. But service includes serving yourself, helping out yourself, because there's absolutely no exception when it comes to love. None. There's not, uh, she's just so awkward. She drives me insane. Or, you know, he really looks like he's doing fine over there. Or even the, I'm so stupid, what the heck? To serve ourselves, we need to go through that grieving process. But we need to know that we can overcome it. And even more than that, we need to know that we can help others overcome it. You have to have that desire, that want to give your time, your knowledge, your commitment to others, and to even to want it to receive it back from others. It may sound crazy simple, but it does not get executed as often as it should. Our hearts have to be founded in a place of love for others and for ourselves. We have to strive to benefit others because in the end, it will benefit us. This talk was easy and hard to write all at the same time because I'd watch something or listen to someone and I'd be like, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. I need to put this in my talk. But then be like, calm down. I need to pick and choose here. But something I absolutely had to put in my talk came from one of my classes. Uh, my teacher asked a question. He said, whose voice do you hear most often? Yours. You hear your voice most often. I hear my voice most often. And normally I'm like, what the heck are you saying up there? But Seriously, you hear your voice most often. So what, make sure what you're feeding yourself is some good, positive stuff. This leads me into how do we even build a service-oriented heart? The biggest and most impactful way is to allow love and allow kindness. Stop rejecting even the most annoying, optimistic kindness that your best friend just radiates. Stop rejecting the kindness that peeps in your mind, but you can't allow yourself to rest. Once you reject this love and reject kindness, you start to feel bad for yourself, like nobody's there. Once you stop rejecting the kindness and allow love in, you can admit, you can give off that beautiful feeling to others. You can be that annoying best friend now. But that beautiful feeling, it unites us. It starts communities. What? Oh, yeah. Once you start recognizing the love and the kindness people have shown to you, and then and gratitude fills your soul, and then you realize that you've given your time, your love, your commitment to others, just, just allow yourself to feel. Take a moment. Because what you're feeling is the building of a service-oriented heart. 
And the building of this heart is so essential to so many aspects of life. The second body part is a goal-oriented mind. Be a go-getter. There's not the go-getters of the world and me. No, we can all want and seek more. Be disciplined. Sometimes I feel like I'm so undisciplined, right? I'm so unstructured all over the place and we're just kind of too cool to be that serious because that's the connotation we think of, serious, controlled. Discipline is showing a controlled form of behavior or way of thinking, but in reality, I'm not as undisciplined as I thought. I have a disciplined way of thinking. And many of you already have that way of thinking, and we can all have that way of thinking, because it doesn't matter if you're type A, type B, have your whole life together, have nothing together, we can all be linked by our way of thinking. Not how it gets done, but the fact that we all move from goal to goal. The underlying process is very discipline. Being disciplined is so important. It's one of the biggest lessons I've learned recently, perfect in time of this talk. But to not only be disciplined in my goal setting, but to be disciplined enough to keep going, no matter the circumstances. Let me take you throughout a day, all right? You wake up, first check. And you get your work on early, first, uh, next check. And then you're like, okay, I'm gonna go finish my little project. And you finish, and they're like, ooh, ooh, look at me. And you're like, I'm gonna go talk to my crush. Well, all these little actions and little check marks, they create a habit. And goal setting needs to be habitual because in the grand scheme of things, when you're going for VP of marketing, finishing your doctorate degree, starting a family, whatever it might be, it all starts from little actions. Once a habit is formed, you're so much more likely to have courage to start and set a, and achieve future goals. And I don't need a statistic to tell you that. But in case you're wondering how statistics relate, a quote by Jack D. Hodge says, up to 90% of our everyday behavior is based on habit. Nearly all of what we do each day, every day, is simply habit. Therefore, habit determines future success and future, be or future behavior and future success. So how do you build a goal-oriented mind? You guessed it, you create habits. You know when you have goals, take, t take it step by step and don't allow yourself to stop because it feels stupid or worthless because it's creating courage. And courage needs to be there when the big goals come into play. The third body part is action-oriented hands. The first thing I'm gonna tell you um, is that you have to buy into yourself. In the book, The 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, one of the laws simply states, in order to buy into yourself, you have to uh, sorry, in, in order to buy into the vision, you have to buy into the leader. If you do not buy into yourself, first of all, nobody will. Second, all your dreams, your goals, your visions, they will not be accomplished. I believe in each and every one of you, and you may be like, what? I don't, you don't even know us. But I do believe, because I know we all fall, I know we all make mistakes. I know we all fall into self-victimization. I know at one point we all think to ourselves, I am not good enough. But I know that we all wake up the next day. And whether we see the beautiful shining sun or not, we all continue. You have, and you have to buy in yourself in order for your vision to succeed. Your goals, your dreams, they may seem so unachievable, but that is a view. So change it. Change it so you can see it being achieved. Perspective is power. This is where it gets physical. You have to physically go out there and crush that job interview. You have to physically go out there and talk to that friend you've been so scared to talk to. Something I love saying is you have to be comfortable with discomfort. You have, I mean, life can be straight up, downright uncomfortable. I mean, just imagine when people sing happy birthday to you. I mean, I don't care how much of a social butterfly you are, those 20 seconds are brutal. But seriously, you can't back down. You have to be comfortable with making mistakes and everything that comes in between. Action is so important. Thinking you gets you to the action, but without physically acting, nothing gets done. At some point in my life, someone asked a question, and it was, it was awesome. They asked, the question was, where did your wings go? Don't you all think, when we, don't we all think that when the opportunity, opportunity comes, we'll take it? Oh yeah, I'll be there, I'll, I'm there. But in reality, we don't. Sometimes we don't even take the small chances. So where did our wings go that can make us fly? How can we build those wings and act? Open your mouth, talk with people, whatever it might be about, but talk. Go serve, write a letter, whatever. Go take your ideas and run with it. Literally the other day I was driving and whenever I see a car with hazard lights on, I always just wanna stop and be like, hey, this is not gonna be your worst day. It's all right, you know, can I call someone for you? But then I'm like, Hannah, you have no idea how to change a flat tire. 
no idea how to jumpstart a car, and no mechanical bone in your body. So a lot of times I'm like, I don't do it. I let fear tell me no. But the other day I was driving and I saw a car like this and I was like, I was thinking about this talk, this talk that I was about to give and here I am not practicing what I was about to be preaching. So like any sane person would do, I took a, you could say sharp turn around, it looks something like this. <laughs> the point of the story is that nobody fully has their life together, but you can control the controllables. You can act. I ask teachers, coaches, parents, kids, you name it, where and when they feel most empowered. It is so important. Oh, sorry, here were some of the results. It is so important to recognize where and when you feel empowered so that you can mirror that in places you don't feel as empowered. You have to start to change the role, the task, the position, the place that is empowering to you that is empowering. At the end of the day, we all want to belong. We all want someone to choose us. But why can't we choose ourselves? Of course there's gonna be people in your life supporting you, cheering you on, there for you. But you need to be able to empower yourself to get through any obstacle and any opportunity. I wish when I was 12 years old, I could notice with my heart that my parents weren't moving to directly hurt me. I wish I could notice, I could recognize with my mind that I, if by setting little goals throughout the day out here at Westfield, I could be happier. I wish I reached out um, to my siblings because they were going through a rough time too. I love the little saying, you've got to nourish to flourish because you've got to nourish your heart your mind, and your hands. And you've got to nourish others as well to be able to flourish. These body parts may have seemed like they mesh together, but that is because they're supposed to. All three have to be there to acquire ultimate courage, to acquire power that's already directly in us. We just have to reach for it. This talk will be as good as you make it. This talk will mean absolutely nothing to you unless you act on feelings that have surfaced here today. I wish you guys all nothing but all the love and all the best. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk.